back to the episode of Backpack Bushcraft. This is actually going to be the first episode of Backpack Bushcraft for 2018. I'm not doing a bit or nothing, it's just facts. This is the first episode for 2018. Uh, it's currently 70 degrees in this house, and I'm not wearing pants. To start off this year, we're going to pick up where we left off last year, and we're going to be working with another seed from David Canberry's 10 Seeds of Survivability. Last year we ended with Candle, and if you watched the last video, I told you what we'll be doing today, and today we're going to be working with Canvas Needles. So what I have here is Durs' Homecraft Needles, uh, this is how I would say it, uh, the European quality, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, well, I imagine it has to be a good thing, otherwise they probably wouldn't talk about it. Uh, this is a seven count, as you can see there's seven needles in this pack. I paid, I think about $1.75, maybe $2 for this. Uh, it could have been three, but I just don't think it was that high. So let's get into this. Uh, on the back, it actually has numbers. It says, uh, if you can see that, sale uh, sack, canvas, carpet, leather, and two upholstery needles. And like I said, I just opened the pack. I dumped them all out. I don't have them in any specific order. And I'm just going to pick them up and show you which one's which. Um, this one has a very large eye, as you can see on here. Uh, sort of a blunt tip. This is that sack needle. This one, I already know right off the bat. Uh, it's kind of a big eye, not very big, uh, long, but because it has that bend right there, I know that is my cell needle. This is my large upholstery needle. This is the small upholstery needle. Um, here is the three other needles I talked about. Now, going on size, if I paid attention, I should be able to guess this should be uh, canvas, carpet, and leather. However, if I just look at them a little bit more closely i look at the largest one i, I notice uh, first off it has a, a fairly uh, large eye not as large as the other two but uh, for a normal needle it was a pretty big eye uh, but also the point is fairly sharp uh, it actually has uh, more like a triangular uh, pattern than a circle and uh, I've, I've seen a lot of those characteristics from canvas needles so i'm going to go ahead and assume that's the canvas needle well, this one looks like a typical needle just a little bit smaller very sharp point very large eye um, i really have no other way to memorize this except it's a little bit smaller than my canvas needle and it has a very sharp point it does not have that triangular wedge it has a very big eye compared to this one here this one has a very small eye uh, but this one looks a lot like the canvas needle because it actually has the same uh, flat sides, like more like the triangle wedge as the canvas needle does. Uh, just by memory, I know that this smaller one is the leather needle. And I know that this larger one here is the carpet needle. Now when I was first drafting this lesson, I knew that I would be sewing. So uh, a few tips that I'm able to give you is if you're able to take any type of thread to the field, I recommend upholstery thread. Uh, I think it is very superior to just general thread, uh, especially for stuff that you're doing. I, all of the stuff I sew and make out of canvas, uh, you haven't got to see it yet. Hopefully I'll be able to show it to you in the future. Uh, but all of it is sewn with this uh, brown upholstery thread. Uh, very strong, very stiff, and uh, it is hard to break or rip. So I definitely love this stuff. Um, now to begin, uh, what you're going to do is you want to put the thread through the eye of the needle. The bigger the eye, the easier it's going to be. Now, this stuff is actually so stiff and thick that it just, you don't have to lick it to make it straight. So, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, what I like to do is I like to make sure, it go, I like to put through the eye, about an inch or so. I then like to take the tail and the end that just came through the eye and hold them together and pull. And if I can pull it and they don't separate, then that means my thread is through the eye. I then want to start drawing it out so that I have and I want about 18 inches here that's why every everything I've read and watched people say about 18 inches is good here at the end what I like to do is uh, just a little overhand knot uh, as close as you can get to the tail the better and you can actually use your needle to uh, help you with this so that's gonna start the basis of setting up your needle to begin sewing. Uh, but now that we have our needle set up, let's look at some uh, different types of stitching that I'm going to try to teach you today. Um, this first one we'll talk about is the running stitch. 
To start, I just like to uh, get my needle through both pieces of the fabric, pull it all the way through, and then I like to go again, although almost all the way, have a little bit of a loop on the back. I like to go on top of it, go through that loop, and that is me locking it up. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just start folding it on there. Now, once I got my needle through here, I'm going to lay it long. You can see there's a lot of length there. Now, I'm not going to stick it in here. That's too long. But I'm going to lay it long, and I'm going to pull it back until I think that that's just enough. Stick it through there. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. I said this earlier, but this is called the running stitch. When you're done, when you're at the end, you want to stretch your fabric. You want to stretch on the line where the thread is. You want to stretch it real tight because you want all the slack out of it. You don't want to bunch it up. Okay, you don't want to have it all. You don't want to have it all bunched up like this. You want it to take all the slack that's left on the needle and thread. And the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna lock it just like you've locked all the others. Just go in and come out, and, and as you come out, instead of just going through the hole and pull it, go through it once, go through it twice, go through it three times if you want. But that is going to lock it in place perfect. Now, I like to just do this at the end, tie another overhead knot in it, uh, so I don't have to worry about it coming undone. You can do that if you want. And here's actually what it will look like. There you go. You can see it's pretty good. It's not perfect. Like I said, this is not the best one to use. It's definitely the easiest to use. You can still see there's some there's some flaws in it. I did not say I was the best hand sewer, but this this definitely would pass if uh, you were just sewing up a shirt or something to uh, keep you out of the cold a little bit. Be in good shape. Now, uh, if you want a good way to save the practice material, uh, because you know you don't want to just sew two pieces together and then go get some more, uh, what I like to do is just, you know, like I said, you're sewing two pieces together. Uh, just cut out that uh, sewing scene that you just did. And that way you can look at, you can analyze, you can say, okay, I probably need to do this better next time, or maybe I need to, you know, maybe maybe I started real good, but I got a little wild near the end, or maybe my locking. Uh, Maybe my locking stitch wasn't good as, as good as I thought it was, but you know it's a good way to look at your old work and sort of criticize and sort of critique yourself. Uh, now the next stitch we're going to be learning is called the whip stitch. Uh, a lot of times I'll do it on bigger projects where you just can't get that fine weave in, and uh, you know that running stitch. Uh, it's just when it's just too hard to do. I'll typically attempt that. Just like last time, we're going to lock our fabric together. So for the whip stitch, it's a continuous motion. You're going in one direction. You're not going to go back and forth like the whips, uh, like the running stitch. You're just going to keep going in loops. Uh, I always called it the loop stitch. But yeah, I'm just going to go through towards you guys. I'm going to come all the way. And I'm going to just let this little piece of thread rest on the top there. Okay, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to let it rest right there, and then I'm going to do it again. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but it does get the job done. And again, I did say that I like to use this with leather. So again, I got my saved piece here, and I can keep that or I can show it to somebody whatever I want to do okay so I'm starting this one down because it's again it's getting kind of hard to sew up so y'all can see my face and see the sewing so I'm just gonna spare you to have trouble of looking at my face all right so I'm gonna start this one closer to the edge but you can start it over here you can start it however you want uh I'm just starting over here to the edge just to sort of show a feature of this next stitch it's called a blanket stitch uh what you're gonna do is you're gonna lock it in so I'm going to go through the back here. I'm going to go through the back toward myself. And I'm going to pay attention to that loop. Alright. 
This loop is very important for this one because last time when we was doing the whip, this loop was in our way. But for the blanket, you actually incorporate. We're gonna go up through the loop, pull everything together, and that's our first stitch. Once I got that, I just go on to this next side. Make sure I line this up again a little bit better. And there we go. I can just start picking up right where I left off. I could theoretically do it with the others as well. Uh, but I like doing uh, corners with a blanket stitch this way because they uh, they just look more uniform. And uh, this is a very strong stitch. Uh, very strong like the uh, whip stitch. So uh, when you have something like this that you can just run around corners and it's going to look the same. It's going to be just as strong. I definitely like trying it out. Definitely like, uh, definitely like you working with it. And then to, uh, you know, your final one when you're done, same way as always, go through the loop. But in this instead, go through the loop. I don't know, maybe we might do three times. Feeling crazy. Three times, cinch it down. Come into here. I always like to tie extra, sort of like a stop knot at the end of my stuff, just in case. Here's the inside of it. And you see it actually does peak. We actually do kind of have a little bit of a peak there. Uh, it'd be good to hold shape. Uh, and again, you can keep it on the outside like this too. You can just leave it like that. Or if you wanna, you know, if you're, you know, if you're doing the inside and you wanna turn it out, this is what it'll kind of look like on the outside. Now we are on to the last stitch. This is going to be called the hidden stitch, the ladder stitch. I think maybe the closer stitch. I'm not sure about the last name for it. Let's say this is our jacket and we get a tear cut into it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the inside and we're going to bring our tail to it. That way you can't see nothing. Now this is really, just to look pretty, but it actually is really nice to just close stuff up this way. So even if it doesn't look pretty, if it closes it up, you're in good shape. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, sew, but the pattern we're gonna do is going to look a lot more like a uh, ladder. You usually wanna go past your rip, because otherwise it will just come out. Uh, but the trick I learned for this is once you go past it, you just want to bring everything out and then cinch it all up. That is, for the most part, the hidden stitch, or it's what they call the ladder stitch or the hidden stitch. Well guys, that'll do it for this episode. Uh, hopefully not my sewing career. I'm gonna try to practice, get a little bit better. Uh, if you all take nothing else away from this video, I want you to take this fact away. Uh, if I can sew like that, anybody else could sew better than that so you don't have to worry about messing up it, it's it's actually kind of fun i'll be i'll be very honest it, it gets a little addictive sometimes <sighs> next week we will be uh continuing with sewing stuff we're actually going to be uh bringing in different types of materials or fabric to sew uh we're also going to bring different types of thread or stuff that can work as thread to sew with uh and you don't want to miss that so make sure you like comment subscribe to the channel backpack bushcraft uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at BPAC Bushcraft. And you can also check out the website where I post a blog every Sunday night at 10 p.m. EST. That website is www.backpackbushcraft.com. And until next time, guys, keep those fires burning. Put another log on for me.